All right, these are some introduction to limits with trig functions. So we have two special ones that we want to know. The limit as theta approaches zero of sine theta over theta is one. And the limit as theta approaches zero of cosine theta minus one over theta is zero. And so if you notice, we're approaching zero on each one, and each one has a denominator of theta. So that would be zero and zero. So at theta equals zero, both of these are undefined. But as the limit, as we approach them, this one will be one and this one will be zero. So here is our sine theta. And so you can see at that point, it'll let me get it. It says it's undefined. But coming in from the left, you can see that we're approaching one. Coming in from the right, we're approaching one. And so our limit here is one. And same thing with the other one, the one minus cosine x over x at that value it's undefined it's not letting me do it undefined there we go so coming in from the left you can see we're approaching zero and coming in from the right we're also approaching zero so our limit for this one is zero all right so what we're going to be doing is using these and theta here is you're using as a variable here and so on each of these what you want to do is make sure that they are the same thing that we're approaching all right so let's try some so the first is just direct substitution there's no issue here there's no domain issue that we're going to have we're going to have a domain here of negative infinity to positive infinity so we can plug anything on this function is continuous and so you're going to first start by just doing direct substitution for the x just like before and finding out what it is. So this is sine of pi minus two. And so this gives us zero minus two, which is negative two. And you can check that in your calculator. If we had cosine of seven x, same thing. Our domain here is negative infinity to positive infinity. So we can just plug in our zero. And cosine of zero over five. So cosine of zero is one, and so our answer is one-fifth. So if there's no domain issue, you just plug it in and use direct substitution, just like we did with our polynomials. Now, if we have a domain issue here, like x is approaching zero, you plug in zero, this is not gonna work. In fact, we're getting zero over zero, just like before, if we did direct substitution. So that's telling us that we're allowed to simplify a little bit. So we're gonna be using our sine theta over theta equals one. So we're going to go limit as x approaches zero. And then what we need to do is turn that denominator into a seven x just like this seven x up here. So here's how you do that. You rewrite the problem. And then we're just going to introduce a seven here. But if I introduce a seven on the denominator, I have to introduce a seven to the numerator. That way it stays equal. All right, and now we have our seven x here. So we continue on and we go the limit as x approaches zero and we can easily now say seven x if we wanted to, but we're gonna leave it as x. So this would be seven over four sine of seven x over four x. I mean, who? over seven x. So it's just a little bit of switch. We switched to seven and the four, putting the four here, the seven there, and now we have our limit. So that 7 fourths, the limit of 7 fourths is just 7 fourths. So we get 7 fourths limit as x approaches 0 of sine of 7x over 7x. So as long as these match, we get 1. So this is 7 fourths times 1, which is 7 fourths. And there you have it. So all you're going to do is whatever's inside that sign, with that sign, whatever number is sitting there, you're going to just introduce it to the denominator multiply it to the top, replace whatever number is next to the x with that number you place there to get this, do a little switch, and then there it is. So this is basically your limit that you're creating. It's 7 fourths because this will go to 1. Well, what if it's upside down? Well, it's the same exact thing. So what we do is we do a reciprocal, and then now it's a denominator. So if you flip this, remember if you're dividing, it's just the fraction being flipped. And so now we can place a 7 here and a 7 there. And we end up with the limit as x approaches zero 
of 1 over 7 sine 7x seven over 7x. Seven and then if you look at this, this is just 1 seventh. So this is equal to 1 seventh, the limit as x approaches 0, of 1 over sine 7x seven 7x. Seven so you can see that that is still a denominator here. If we were to flip it, that 7x would go to the top. And then this is 1 on the bottom, and so we end up with 1 seventh times 1 over 1, which is still 1 seventh. Now you can check these limits with your calculator or Desmos as well. So I've got our, our function f of x plugged in here. And so to check it, all you have to do is go to your table set, whatever we're approaching. So we are approaching 0, so that's where we want ours to start. And then pick a point that's really, really close, because we're going to approach from the left and the right, and getting close, just like we did in those problems earlier with limits. So now if you go to your table with it, you can see that coming in from the right, it's 0.1429. And coming in from the left, it's 0.1429. And we got 1 seventh. So if we check 1 seventh, you'll see it's 0.1429. So this checks perfectly. All right. Let's try it now with cosine of 2x. It's the same thing. You see that theta and theta. They just need to match. And so we're going to say the limit as x approaches 0 of cosine of 2x minus 1. And so we're going to have to multiply the bottom by a 2 to give us what we need. So we multiply the bottom by 2 and the top by 2. And then make sure that you put a parenthesis around this top one. Okay, so now we have our 2 here and our 2 here, and then we're going to do the little switcheroo, just like before. So the limit as x approaches 0 of 2, and then we switch with the 5, and now we get cosine of 2x minus 1 all over 2x. And so now it matches. You see they're the same and the same. <clears throat> and as x approaches 0, it's the same as 2x approaching 0. So it's the same thing. So this would now become the limit as, oops, sorry, two-fifths, the limit as x approaches zero of cosine of 2x minus one over 2x. And it, like I said, if you really want to get picky, you can say, okay, well, I'm going to change my x to 2x approaching zero. But I'm going to leave it as x approaches zero. All right, and then this becomes zero. So this becomes two-fifths times zero. So the answer is zero. And you can even check with the calculator for the graphing function. You can see from the left we're coming in to the 0. And from the right we're coming in to 0. You can see that they're spaced perfectly from each other. And there you have it. All right, so now we have some trick problems here. So you can notice on the top we have two sines. And on the bottom we have an x squared. So what we can do here is maybe you've already seen it. But you can split that up. That x squared means that you have two x's being multiplied. This x squared is x times x. And so we're going to give one x to the first sign and the other x to the second sign. It's all multiply. And then now we can multiply this one by a 3 and this one by a 5 to give us what we need. So we get the limit as x approaches 0 of 3 sine 3x three over 3x three times 5 sine of 5x over 5x. And so now we can say 3 limit as x approaches 0 of sine 3x over 3x times 5 limit as x approaches 0 of sine 5x over 5x. And then this becomes 3 times 1 times 5 times 1, which is 15. So this will go to 15 as our limit. So you want to always just make sure they're the same. And so if you have two x's, you can split them. And then we plug in our calculator. Make sure our table set is at zero with a very small distance. And then just like you had in that previous picture, you can see that coming in from the right and coming in from the left, they're both 15, which is what we have. All right, this is our last trick, and so obviously we're going to have the limit as x approaches 0. And so what you want to think about is this situation. We have a sine of 7x here. And so in order to use that, 
rule that we have, we're going to need a 7x down here. So one of the ways to do that is if you see a common factor, you can factor it. So these both have an x. We factor that x out. Split it up so we'd get 1 over x minus 4 times sine of 7x over x and then multiply it by the 7 you need, top and bottom. So all we're doing here is taking that x minus 4 out that we don't need. It's a 1 over x minus 4, leaving the sine of 7x and x together. doesn't matter the order here. And then putting a 7 top and bottom. And this would give us the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over x minus 4 times 7, and then the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of 7x over 7x. And then we know that last one's going to 1. And so this one, it is continuous at 0. So we are allowed to just plug it in times 7 times 1. And so we get 1 over negative 4 times 7, which is negative 7 fourths. And decimal-wise, it's not even approximate, it's equal. Decimal-wise, that's a negative 1.75. So let's check that in our calculator. So let's plug it in alpha y, and then sine 7x over x squared minus 4x. Don't know what happened there. The wrong one. There we go. And then again, we're approaching 0. So make sure we started at 0. It's very small distance second table, and there it is, negative 1.75 from the right and the left, everything checks out perfectly. And there you have it. So you're using basically three things here. You're doing a direct substitution. And if you have sines, you're using this and getting creative with it. And if you have cosines, you're using this. And so any other problem they give you is just a way to split it up in order to be able to use one of these two. Thank you.